So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the STEM Alliance Scientix and Intel webinar, Transforming Learning for Students Through Intel Skills for Innovation Competition. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix, and Intel, and it is part of the STEM Discovery Campaign 2023. My name is Aishwarya, and I work for European School Net STEM Alliance. Every year, the STEM Alliance organizes STEM Discovery Campaign to inspire young people about STEM subjects and careers, nurturing a capable and innovative workforce in Europe. Together with us today in the room, we have my colleagues Rocio Benito and Chanel Martinez, who will be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. So in case you have any issues with your audio or connection, please feel free to send a message in the chat and we'll help you out right away. Now, before we go through our agenda for the day, let me share some technical details with all of you. You'll see that all the microphones and the cameras have been disabled. Only me and our speaker today, only our cameras are on. So if you have a question for our speaker, you can just post them in the chat. We'll also be sharing a lot of useful information and links with you throughout the webinar. So you can find those links also in the chat window. So keep looking at them and more highs from a lot of people from Greece, from Romania. Nice. And in a minute, we'll also be sharing with you the signature list. So um, I'll tell you more about the signature list in, in a minute. And once you finish signing, we'll give our floor to our speaker. We'll talk to you about Intel and the Skills for Innovation competition. Our expert from Intel will talk to us about the demands of the future job market and the new set of skills that students require these days. Our expert will also then delve into the importance of integrating technology activities into the current curriculum and everyday teaching and learning practices. Integrating technology in curriculum fosters the development of both mindsets and skill sets in students. Finally, you'll be able to ask questions on the chat throughout the webinar and we'll address them in the Q&A session right at the end. Now, the signature list. Why is this important? So we can continue to organize events like this one. And also in case you want a certification, certificate of participation, this is the only way to request one. So you can um, maybe find the link in the chat or you can also click here right on the screen. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome Scott Campbell, our speaker for today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Can, can we hear? Can everyone hear me? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> so great. So uh, I want to welcome everyone to uh, today's training. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all talk about why skills for innovation is important. Um, and then I'll dig in a little bit to how you use it, how it fits in your classroom and can change learning for students. So just a real quick uh, minute to talk about myself. I first of all, I live in the United States. I live in Pennsylvania, which is the Northeast US. Uh, I was a teacher for many years. I was a principal for many years. And I've been doing this type of work of uh, training teachers, of working in educational technology for the last 12 years. And more importantly, I've been par a part of this program with Intel since the very beginning. So this is my third year of working with SFI. And the really cool thing about it is I've had the opportunity to see how SFI, which is the term I'll use for skills for innovation in this, how SFI has transformed learning for teachers, for schools, for kids in over 40 countries. And it's really neat to be able to have conversations with educators from throughout the world about how it's making a difference for them. So here's our agenda as far as what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about skills for innovation in general. I'm going to talk about the two pieces that make up SFI, which is the professional development and the starter packs. The starter packs are what we're going to use and what you'll use for the actual uh, for the actual competition. And then I'm going to walk you through a little bit of what a specific starter pack looks like, how it's different from a, reg a regular lesson, and then we'll talk about getting you set up to actually register for the competition. 
And finally, we'll have at the end the opportunity for you to be able to ask questions. So this, I, I think, is a really powerful place to start. And if you look at the jobs landscape, this is only two, two, two years away from now. And you see that while we have 85 million declining roles, we have 97 million emerging roles that are happening. So not only are the, all these new careers that are occurring being created, but when you look at the types of careers that are new that are being created, you see the shift from things like manual labor positions, data entry clerks, administrative tasks, to jobs that require students to have a higher skill set in being able to use technology. I always say that one of my experiences in the United States is that I find that most students from the time they start school to the time that they graduate and move on to a university aren't exposed to any of the very few, if any of these skill sets while they're in school until they get to a university level. And really, you're going to see that's one of the big goals of SFI is to expose students to these skills. Now, you can see here, and this just sort of backs this up, the future demands uh, for new skill sets. And you see that shift over time from physical and manual skills and basic cognitive skills, where now kids need to use higher cognitive skills, social emotional skills. And really, the big one there is students being able to adapt and use technological skills. And it's really, the world is really changing as far as what students need to know. And what SFI is trying to do and what Intel and our team is trying to do is help to make this happen for students. You saw that from that previous slide, that focus in social emotional learning. You'll see when you look at the framework and when you look at the starter pack activities, you're going to see this deeply rooted connection with all the activities to social emotional learning topics. It's going to have to do with dealing with real world problems. So you'll see that the activities that you will use with your students will do things like having them discuss water pollution, having them discuss how to be kind to each other online. It'll see them discussing things about how to make sure everyone has enough food to eat. Those are the types of things that'll be interwoven into all of the lessons. You'll also then see that all of these starter pack activities fit into one of two categories with mindsets. They're either going to develop a computational thinking mindset or a design thinking mindset. Two really important things in learning right now that, again, don't seem to get the attention that they really need. And then finally, all the starter pack activities are going to be divided into one of these four skill sets. And as, a, as an educator who's looking at these, you might say, oh, I have a particular interest in this particular category, this skill set, or this particular skill set. And I am going to encourage you really to look at all the starter pack activities that are there. But you can see they fit into the area of programming and coding, data science, simulation and modeling, or artificial intelligence and machine learning. One of the very first things I say, having worked with teachers from all over on this, is if you're someone who's coming into this, who doesn't consider yourself very tech savvy, that's OK, because we put a lot of supports and resources into these uh, courses, into these activities to support you so that you can learn this technology along with your students. So I want to make sure everyone feels comfortable there. Now, this really lays out what we created with SFI. First of all, there's a teacher planning toolkit or a school planning toolkit that you won't be working with for this. You'll be working as a teacher with these other three areas. The starter packs, and I'll talk a little bit then about why we call them starter packs. They're going, and I'm actually going to read right from this, experience technology used for skill building in the actual learning environment and verify viability, identify best practices for wider adoption. You'll have an opportunity through these to introduce your kids to technology, the skills that they've never had before. And you'll be able to take technology 
and move it into your English class or into your math class or into your science class. And that's what's really cool about this opportunity. I'm just going to briefly talk to you about the professional development aspect that's in there so that you know that that's a tool that you'll have available or at your fingertips as well. And when we talk about this deploy piece, that will be when I actually get you registered and I'm going to make sure everybody gets registered and is on the SFI platform so that you can access everything. Everything's going to live within that platform that you'll use. So first, I want to talk a little bit about the professional development aspect that's in there. And again, once you get registered, you'll be able to find this and check this out a little bit more in depth. So we talk about a teacher who is trying to improve their skill set with technology. So what we did was we created these professional development courses that you can use as an educator to help upskill upskill what you're able to do with technology in the classroom and really fits nicely with the starter pack activities. So again, doesn't fit exactly with the competition, but a really great tool that you're going to find on the platform. Most of these courses, with a few exceptions, are going to be take about six hours to complete. Uh, and the nice thing about it is that they're asynchronous. So you can work for a while, stop, come back, pick it up the next day or a week later and finish what you've been working on. The other thing is that they're differentiated based upon where your particular strength or skill is in technology. So first, the first level that we're going to see here, the adaptive adapter level is typically for teachers who haven't had exposure to technology before. So you're still working with things like being able to uh, put together spreadsheets, word processing, using the, uh, social media for the first time. The bulk of teachers fall typically in that level two leader of learning experiences level. Uh, other teachers that are more tech savvy will fall into the third or fourth category there, the catalyst or the mentor level. The nice thing is a teacher goes in, selects whatever course they want to do, and these courses will have videos, they'll take you to outside resources, it will give you options. Uh, one of the really great um, things that this teaches teachers, I like to use this as an example, is that there is a course in here that really has a section that focuses on how teachers can build their own uh, virtual escape rooms. So it's really neat because teachers are able to go in and access these things. The professional development suite helps you as a teacher to be able to create these things for your own students. Again, it's asynchronous, so you work at it at your own pace and it's differentiated where you get the opportunity to be able to select where you want to start and pick that course that's at that just right learning level for you. The other nice thing, and this is a big deal in the United States, I, I can at least say this from a US perspective, when you do finish a course, when you do finish a course, you get a certificate that says, for example, that you finished this six hour course. In the US, like I said, it's a big deal because you need that to continue your, your education and continue to upkeep your license. You also have social media badges that shows what courses that you've completed. So that's another really nice tool that comes along with completing those professional development courses. And once we go on the platform live, I'll show you more about where they are. All right, so let's dig in to the Intel SFI starter pack. And I always feel like when I'm going to talk about the starter pack that I really want to start with talking about why is it called starter a starter pack? I'll just kind of leave this here for everyone to take a look at for a second. And take a look at this overview. Starter pack. So let's say I like to use this as an example. Let's say that I am an English teacher and an English language arts teacher, and I've decided to select a starter pack to use with my um, high school students 
So now with that starter pack, I'm using a tool like Scratch in the classroom, which is used for coding. First of all, this is going to support you to be able to do that lesson with your students. But why is it a starter pack? Because once you've done that lesson with your students, now your students know how to use Scratch. You as a teacher know how to use Scratch, and you've learned how to take technology and bring it into your language arts classroom. Now you can use that skill through all your other classes that you teach and in future years. Your students walk away being able to use that skill in other classes and in future grades and get them interested in those types of careers that I showed at the beginning of, this, of the presentation. You'll see here, there's 70 starter pack activities and they're gonna be across grade levels, they're going to be across uh, different subject areas, but here's a word I want to put out as you look at this here. You'll see that they're categorized into STEM, language arts, and humanities. I would tell you as I go into the platform and start showing you things, dig around because a starter pack that covers STEM might fit really well in humanities and language arts as well. Additionally, there's a number of starter packs that might say that they are an elementary starter pack that are adapted and used at the middle school level and the high school level as well. So I, I say that because I don't want to scare people off if you say I'm a high school teacher, but this says that it's intended for middle school. It can really easily, many of them be adapted to meet the needs of your kids. So I like putting that out there before we dig in any further with this. So what do you find in each starter pack? And I'll go through and unpack each of these things. First of all, this is where the support comes in. You have an educator's guide. Now, what's nice about that educator's guide, that's going to be in a PDF format. That will tell you, you can see here, the objectives, the overview. What's really helpful about this is because the lesson comes in a PowerPoint, that will say slide one. Here's guiding questions that you can ask. Here's your support as a teacher for teaching this particular slide. So it walks you through and supports you every step of the way through the lesson. And that's really important. I see a lot of teachers who will lay out the educator's guide along with the lesson at the same time. And it's really helpful for them to be able to get the most of the lesson. Then you have the teaching deck. This actually has the lessons in it. And before we get to this, I'll preview by saying all of these materials are available as zip files that you'll be able to download. So you won't have to worry about any specific passwords with anything to access the lessons. And you can see the teaching deck has all the activities, all the guided learning. It comes as a PowerPoint. If anyone has an issue with using PowerPoints in the classroom, which I know happens some places, there's also a PDF version as well. So if you do have issues with that PowerPoint version, it'll also have the PDF version as well. And then finally, there's these working files. So some of the lessons have worksheets that go with it. Some have other kind of data files that go with it. The one thing that's missing here that's really important that almost all the starter pack activities include is a beginner's guide. So going back to that example that I gave you about Scratch, for example, there's a beginner's guide for Scratch. So if I'm a teacher who's nervous about using this new technology in my classroom, I grab that beginner's guide and it walks me through all the steps of how I can use Scratch, learn to use it as a teacher. I can then practice, ask any questions that I have about it, maybe talk to someone in my tech department, to other teachers, get myself familiar with using Scratch before I then go out and try to use it with my students. So it doesn't say beginner's guide here, but I want you to remember that's that's really one of the most important extra files that's in here that should give you confidence to try something new with your students. Okay, I'm going to take you live to the site now. And when we get into the site, we're going to take a look at what this look, should look like for you and show you some of the key points with this.
OK, if I can know from someone from the team, if they could just give me a thumbs up that you can see my screen. OK, you can I'm see. Gonna... Perfect, thank you. Excellent. It's always hard, everyone, when you do webinars to make sure that you're sharing your screen and everyone can see what you're looking at. So thank you so much. This is where you're going to end up, the Skills for Innovation platform. Now, let me show you a few really awesome things on this platform, and this will help you out. You'll also see at the very end of the presentation that I'm going to show you when I have office hours and it will have my email address on there so that if you want to reach out to me to be able to join any of those office hours or other questions, you'll be able to do that. So this is something that I put a lot of heart and soul uh, my, my heart and soul into over the last three years and has really helped change learning for teachers. So you can see here on the platform. Professional development. This is the piece that I already mentioned to you about. And you can see the professional development here, the different levels that are available. And just very quickly to show you, here's this level two, where I said a lot of people will start. You can see here with level two that there's four different courses for you to select as a teacher. And you can see also it will give you an update on how you're doing if you've completed the certificate in that course as you move along. One thing I like to tell everyone to finish this certificate and to get credit for this course, it's going to ask you to do things like create a webinar, create a lesson plan, come up with this really interesting activity and upload it. Or it's going to say things like put things to the discussion board. And it allows me to show you two other really awesome things about SFI. If you look here at professional development, and you go to the very bottom where it says PD course task workspace. This is where products that have been created by teachers, other teachers have been stored and a place that you can go to to get some ideas of what's happening in other countries. And you'll notice a lot of these are going to be in a variety of different languages. You'll see here 29,054 resources that have been uploaded. And keep in mind that the program really has only been up and running for teachers. Uh, that a lot of teachers been, have been on for the last two years. So that's a great number. So this is a place that you can go. Another place I want to show you from right here on the homepage is the discussion board. Because I've seen some really awesome discussions here. So as teachers are completing uh, starter pack activities as they're doing the PD, they're going in and they're putting things on the discussion board. And I find that like as I go through, you can see here just as these last discussions, the number of views and replies that these uh, discussions have had. And they're really from all over the world. So I like showing that just to kind of highlight how schools across the world are taking across the globe are taking advantage of skills for innovation. So once you are in, and again, the next step will be to get everybody online. You have your starter pack activities. Now, here are your 70 starter pack activities that you have. And they're listed here alphabetically. The very first thing that I want to show everyone, and I want to make it a point with this, you see the language here and you see all the languages that are available. Now, the competition itself for you to have an entry in it, it needs to be in English and the team will talk about that at the end. However, if you would prefer to use a starter pack that's in a different language because of where you teach, these are the other languages that are available. Note, not every note that not every starter pack is going to be possibly in that language. So you may, for example, pick French and find that there's only a few or maybe half of the starter packs that are all that are going to be available in French. The other important point with this, because I assume people will take advantage of this, is if you do do this, know that it's not going to automatically come up with that language version until you click and download the zip file. And I'll show you where that's at. This, this filter is just going to show you which starter packs are available in your particular language. That's all. One of the key areas here 
that teachers like to look at and use is the refine button. So if you have a specific skill set that you're looking for, you have the ability to search just by that. If you remember, I mentioned to everyone about primary subject area and grade level. Now I said, as, I, as you recall, I said that you can search for something based off of what you teach. I would ask that you keep an open mind and look through these and look at the skill sets because so many of these can be easily adapted. If you're an elementary teacher to take a middle school starter pack or a middle school teacher to take an elementary starter pack to use with your students. So just keep that in mind as you're searching through the starter packs that are here. Where I want to draw your attention here is software used. This is the really, really amazing part of the Skills for Innovation program. This is 35 different softwares that you have the ability to be able to expose your students to. So again, just to randomly take something here, something like uh, Chatteron. Once you've used Chatteron with your students, you as a teacher then now know how to use Chatteron for other classes when they come in and in future years. And your students know this skill and can use it in other classes. And it starts getting them thinking about those careers of the future that are going to be available to them. Again, those 90 some million extra new careers that are being created. So you do have the ability, if there's something specific you're looking for, to look for a particular software. Finally, and I bring this up because just it's important to know, there are a few, not many, but a few starter packs that um, are not Chromebook compatible. It's not many, but there are a couple. So if that's an issue for you because of what you have available for your students, you could always select this particular refinement there. Now, really quickly, I want to show you what's available. in a starter pack activity. We're going to be using VR Science Museum as an example. So you can see here, it lists it as elementary school in STEM, easily covers several subject areas and can be used in additional grade levels. When you click on the starter pack, now this gives you a lot of the information. It tells you which software is required, in this case, CoSpaces, it tells you the grade level, the subject, the mindset, the skill set, and the duration of the level. If there was other hardware that was needed, and there are a few that require some additional hardware, but very few, that would be listed here as well. You can see here, I mentioned this before. Here is your beginner's guide to CoSpaces, which will be incredibly, incredibly helpful for you if you're trying to use something new for the first time. The activity preview gives you the first two pages of that educator's guide to look at. And it's nice because you can click on here and see what your students will be getting into. And you can see here, learners will create a virtual reality simulation of a museum featuring different animal groups based on their characteristics. And in this case, you can see this is really going to introduce students to the concept of virtual reality. And that's what you'll be getting into with using CoSpaces with your students. Then once you get the chance to be able to download, let me show you. This is where you have the ability now, you've gone into the English version, but if you had already search for just German lessons, you would be able to then select German. Then you would get the materials downloaded to you that are in the German language. So this is where you would see that language changeover with the starter pack activities. Again, a reminder that the competition and that product that you create has to be in English. But if you need to pull your starter pack activity and want to use something in a different language, this is where that you would actually be able to do that. That zip file then, this is a good look at what it would contain. It would contain the teaching deck itself. And if you remember, I said there's a version that is a PDF and as a PowerPoint, that educator's guide, 
that beginner's guide and how to use CoSpaces for the first time. And then if there were any other working files that you would need, they would also be here as well. So this is the way, this is basically the keys for you to be able to get into each of the individual starter pack activities and be able to access them. And again, I want you to keep an open mind because really consider the fact that grade level and, and subject area are very, very flexible with this and lessons can be used in a variety of areas. Now, I wanna give the opportunity here for us to go back in and talk a little bit. I wanna talk a little bit about VR, um, VR Science Museum with everyone. So if, if the team could load up the PowerPoint again, let me stop sharing. And again, here's always this challenging part of switching over to the webinar. Oh, that was smooth. I like it. Okay, so now VR Science Museum. Let's talk a little bit about this. So there again, you see the subject area, the grade level, the skill set, the mindset. The whole goal with this, and I, I love the fact that we do this here. We talk about things like types of animals, reptiles, amphibians, mammals. You can see here, this is what a traditional classroom would look like. Here you're gluing and pasting. Here you're doing a matching activity. That's what the traditional classroom would look like in a science class. So where this changes and how it's different is you as a, you as a, as a teacher have your students do the research that they need to do. They classify animals into reptiles, fish, amphibians, mammals and then they have once they've gotten that science skill now they can dive into technology and use technology and in this case co-spaces to be able to create this really awesome activity they've done the science now they're going to tie in the technology to do this actual finished product and you can get an idea here from from just looking at my screen you can get an idea of the coding that's used to do this with your students as I talk through this, one of the things that I mention, one of the things that I mention to teachers is, if you're a middle school teacher, you could take this same version of this lesson and you could come up with a more challenging topic with your students to do your, your VR science museum. This is just one example. Again, it's that whole idea. It's that whole idea of why we call it a starter pack. Here again, you see some more of the coding that's done to create code, to create this lesson. And at the end, students have the ability to be able to go in or do a presentation. They can talk about their presentation. They can share what is a mammal. And what's really awesome about it is you can create things where uh, the student goes in, clicks on the bear, and the bear says, I'm a mammal. They can click on the bear and the bear changes color. It's a way to take what would be that typical just matching activity and really infuse technology with it. And what's really interesting about um, CoSpaces is, and you'll see there's CoSpaces lessons that are at the elementary, the middle, and the high school level. And I've seen teachers at all level use all three. And this gives you an idea of what students will walk away from with this lesson and ultimately being able to understand, being able to understand virtual reality, being able to classify animals, and being able to really design and create a project that they then can present to their classmates. One of the common questions, one of the common questions that I get here, just to kind of address it, you saw those listings of 35, you saw those listings of 35 technologies that are used to create uh, the starter pack activities. All 35 are either downloadable or they're web-based. So they all can be one of the two. Uh, and I tell everyone, reach out to, if you're not sure about a particular technology, like how do I get Scratch on my computer? That's always something when you're very, 
in those very beginning stages, talk to a tech person, especially if it's something that you have to be able to download on your device and also on your students' devices. I will say, from the standpoint of having worked with countries all over the world, I have not run into or very, very, very few issues with um, privacy or schools being able to access the different technologies needed to do the starter pack activities. The other part that's really important, the other part that's really important to know is that these are all free. So there's none of these technologies, none of these programs, none of these softwares that are going to cost you any money in order to do the lesson. I do say that if, for example, you love co-spaces, you really enjoy doing VR Science Museum with your students, and you want to continue to do more advanced things with co-spaces, then I would tell you moving forward, it's not expensive, but then for future, I would suggest buying it because it's very cheap to get like one of the advanced uh, programs of co-spaces to use with your students if you're going to do some advanced things. But in order to complete just the starter pack activities themselves, all that technology is free to use. So now we get to creating your skills for innovation account. And it's really, really simple. And I do appreciate the fact that it's so simple to go in and actually create your account. And I'll pause a little bit at each of these slides because I want everyone you have the option of either writing this down or if you have a window that you can do this on your device now, you can do that as well, whatever works the easiest for you. So the registration process, skillsforinnovation.intel.com. Once you go in, you will see in the upper right-hand corner the opportunity for you to register, where it'll say registration. You have a registration code here that you can use. Make sure you list that you're a new user. This is your registration code, EUNSFI23. Now I am pausing here for a minute because it's important that I give everyone a chance to be able to make note of this, Copy this, take a screenshot of this, whatever is going to be easiest for you. Now you'll notice when we get to the next page that it's really the last step with this, which will be filling out and submitting your information. Okay, I'm going to move us forward to the next slide here. Again, if you didn't get a chance to get all of that, if you want to just take a screenshot of it or a picture of it, you can always come back and register later. Okay, once you've had a chance to be able to do that, then you go to the registration form itself. Now, I will say with the registration form that if there's an area where you say, I don't see my role here, or I'm not sure how my school fits or district fits, it's okay. Fill out enough of the information, especially under the required fields that are here, to make sure that you're able to, that, that we can at least identify, that we can at least identify um, who you are as a teacher. So again, if you could, once you fill this in, make sure you check the boxes at, at the bottom uh, that you agree to the terms, and then you hit submit, that'll come and get pushed out to you, so.
And that's honestly all that needs to be done for you to be able to get on and get registered. Now, I want to take a moment to talk about office hours. And then I'm going to hand it back to the team to finish up. So I have two office hours that I created. Friday, February 23rd. Friday, March 10th. And that's 12 o'clock noon set time. So that would be 12 o'clock noon to 1 p.m. set time. Uh, if you are interested in joining those, I haven't created the link yet in case anyone asks. Uh, if you are interested in joining any of those office hours, please send me an email. My email address is scott at edmaker.com. And I can provide that, that link for you to be able to join those office hours. And just so everyone knows, just to kind of give you this little piece of information, I actually, as part of EdMaker, EdMaker is actually based in Singapore. And we as an EdTech company develop the material, develop the content that's used by Intel. So when you do see the EdMaker team named in there along with Intel, it's because we're the ones who work with Intel, collaborate with Intel, on the content and on the training throughout the entire globe. And again, I, I can't say enough good things about the program itself and how I've seen teachers be able to take it, grab it, use it with their students, change their teaching, and see how a teacher in Ghana can use skills for innovation, just like a teacher in the United States, just like a teacher in Korea. So it's been very cool. And I will turn it back over to the team now. So let me stop sharing. Go ahead. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Before we move on to the Q&A session, I will talk to you a little bit about the educator challenge itself. Scott already shared a lot of things how to go about it, but I will tell you a little bit about the STEM discovery campaign. So STEM Alliance and Intel are, are organizing the Educator Challenge, which is within the STEM discovery campaign of 2023. So it's a joint international initiative coordinated by Scientix that invites educators, projects, organizations, libraries, schools, universities, youth clubs, and all the interested stakeholders across Europe and the world to celebrate careers and studies in the fields of STEM. The competition calls for educators in primary and secondary schools in Europe and beyond to explore the lesson plans from Intel's Skill for Innovation Starter Pack. That's what we've just learned about. And carry out the lessons with their students. The goal of the competition is to challenge the educators to create and share their stories of implementation which will demonstrate actual use of Intel's pre-designed wonderful learning experiences in the classroom. So how do you do this? I will take a few minutes to go through this slowly. So to participate in the STEM discovery campaign, the first thing that you have to do is to register on the Scientix portal. So when you register on the Scientix portal, you get EUN ID credentials. OK, that's the first thing that you have to do. And how do you do this? You fill in the registration form. You provide your full name and email address, and you create your username and password for the portal. Step one, done. Now, the next thing that you want to do is get your activity pinned on the 2023 STEM Discovery Campaign map. So how do you do that? You do that by filling in the submission form on the STEM Discovery Campaign page, in the Scientix portal, or the STEM Discovery Campaign application. So every time you make an entry, your entry will receive an assigned identification number, which is called the entry ID. Now you need this entry ID if you want to participate in the Educator Challenge. So once you have the entry ID, then you fill in the submission form. So this is very important. The submission form is the most important part of this. So where do you find the submission form? That you find in the about section of the STEM discovery campaign. 
So I see my colleagues have shared a video in the chat, which should make this much easier. Yeah, like I was saying, so you'll find in the about section of the STEM discovery campaign. And when you're making your entry, just make sure you select the educator challenge when you're filling out the form. So three steps. Register on the Scientix portal and get your EUD ID credentials. You pin the activity for which you fill in the submission form. And in three, if you want to take part in this challenge, the discovery, this um, the educator challenge, you fill out the submission form in the about section of the STEM discovery application or the Scientix portal. And to continue, like uh, what Scott already shared, so you register to the to access the starter pack uh, catalog. And he also shared the verification code, which was EUNSFI23. After which you can choose the activity and adapt it to your classroom. So you can choose the activity that you like, choose it based on the theme that you're interested in, the grade level in you're interested in. After which you submit your story of implementation. For which you fill in the comp competition submission form. And finally, at the end of the submission period, the organizers will select five winning teachers in total. So in May 2023, the organizers will announce the winners. The selected winners will be eligible to participate in an EUN workshop in person in Brussels, along with paid accommodation and flight. So potential winners will be contacted by Intel SFI via the email address that you use to register. Also, in addition, all participants who submit their entries will receive a personal certificate of participation. Before we uh, go to the Q&A session, if you haven't signed in the signature list already, please do so. That's the only way you can receive a certificate of participation. I think our colleagues will share the link once again. OK. Also, just a few more points. So this challenge is open to all participants across Europe. So like what Scott was saying, that someone in Ghana is doing this, they're using the starter pack. And someone all over the world, people are using the starter pack, so it's open to everyone. But the submissions have to be in English. And if you have any more questions about uh, the competition, we invite you to read our terms and conditions, which you can find on our website. So you can find the STEM discovery campaign link shared by my colleague, Rocio. So you can download the app. We have a very cool app. So please download it and check it out. And before we finish, we still have some time. So we can have a quick Q&A session. Let's see. We had a question just some time back. Let me find it. OK, so we had someone ask how to choose which starter pack to do in your school first. Hmm. You know, there's not a hard and fast rule as far as which one to pick to do first. I, I for some people, a lot of it has to do with looking at the the soft. They'll start by looking at the software to see because to be fair, there are some that are probably a little more challenging than others. And to look at that, look at the beginner's guide with those to see is this something that I I, I want to take on to do with my students. Uh, but again, I I don't want anyone to be intimidated because that's what those beginner's guides are for. So there really is no hard and fast rule as far as where to actually start a lot of people what they'll do is look at what they're currently teaching look at the, the software that's available and then sort of take those two and marry those two together i had a school a very large district in the u.s that had a they were a high school older students a stem school that was focused on design thinking so they started by looking at specifically stem lessons 
that were focused highly on design thinking, and that's how they sort of got their starting point to work with. So that's going to help drive it, but truly there's not one hard, fast rule of how to start. Okay, thank you. And we have another question. Should we follow the proposed lesson plans or can we adapt and modify? Oh, adapt and modify. That's what that's what kids have to be able to do when they're out of school is be able to adapt and modify. And like I said, a lot of times what, what teachers will do, they will take one of the starter pack activities and they'll adapt it and modify it so they can use it for a different grade level. So that VR science museum, it's really use, easy to take that same concept and adapt and modify some of the parts of that where instead of talking about classification of animals, now we're talking about classification of something else that's more of a middle school topic, and but we're still using co-spaces with it. So it, it's there's no there's no boundary to your imagination and how you can take this and use this with you. And then again, that's the whole idea of why we call it a starter pack. It's great to be able to use it, but then if you feel free to be able to put your own creative touch on it to get the most out of it with your students. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. We received a few questions just some time back. Uh, can you talk about the assessment criteria for the competition and how it measures the impact of innovative skills on students learning? Now, I may have to actually pass that question to you talking about the, the measurement piece, if you don't mind talking a little bit about that. I think I will pass that on to someone else who would be doing the assessment. Let me so, let me talk about this. This mm -hmm. I can say when mm -hmm. I look at because there is you'll see at the end. Let me I, I can help with this. If you look at the end of the educator's guide, there is a rubric that's used to judge students products. I tell teachers one of the things that really shows the value of this is how can kids, when they walk out of that starter pack activity, use that to make the world a better, better place? I know that sounds very simplistic, but it's very true. Now that I've learned to use co-spaces, how can I take co-spaces and take that out with me to other classes and to do other things? I have a group that I'm working with that's looking at now using co-spaces to create a virtual reality tour of, uh, of old homes in their community. So people who can't get out can see virtual tours of old homes from two, three hundred years ago, uh, and they're going to create that and share that with people in the community. So what's the impact? That And again, that's just sort of my own personal touch of what the value is, along with looking at that rubric. OK, thank you. Yeah, that was helpful. Uh, OK, I think that's all the time we have for questions. And before we close, we would also like to give you a little bit of information about what European Schoolnet and Scientix are preparing for you. So we have the STEM discovery campaign that has just started. So stay tuned. We have a lot of activities and a lot of stuff coming up. So you can check out the STEM Alliance webpage and you can join the competition. And in case you haven't seen the latest episode of Scientix TV, which came out yesterday. So in about 20 minutes filled with interviews, discussions, presentations, this show aims to both educate and entertain. So our new episode is a special one because it features a representative from Intel and a teacher from Germany who implemented Intel's skills for innovation startup pack in their classroom. So it's a way for you to see how they did it and maybe it will inspire all the participants here. So my colleague has shared it here. And finally, Scott, thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure being uh, your host and uh, I was very inspired by your enthusiasm and passion for the starter pack. The VR, the VR tour was fascinating to watch. And I took down a couple of things. The, I enjoy skills of professional development. See that I can decide for myself as a teacher where I am and choose accordingly. And the discussion board also where everyone across the world are sharing what they have, what how they have implemented the starter pack. Overall, it's very versatile and very flexible, and I hope our participants are inspired to try it out. That's great, Thank and you I've so seen much it. For joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Sal.